This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to record customer refunds in QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Also ask me about consulting services. Hi, Seth David here with a special screencast for you, brought to you by our QuickBooks Answers division, quickbooksanswers.info. Uh, one of our current members uh, came in with a question, and I figured it was generic enough that I could answer the question with a video that I could also make public. So the question is, I've got a customer. I've invoiced the customer $2,500. They paid a $500 deposit, but then the customer turned around and decided they don't want to go through with it. So now I need to refund the $500 and also, of course, remove the invoice. I have to credit the whole thing. So we have to deal with two things. First, we have to only refund $500, but we have to get then the, whole, the rest of the $2,000 off the books because it's no longer receivable. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come into customers and we want to enter credit memos or refunds or create credit memos or refunds. That's right here. It's about halfway down the menu under customers. So we click on that. Most people are good with that. And then, of course, you're going to want to choose the item that you chose when you originally invoiced them. And if there's more than one, you're going to pretty much want to mimic what the invoice did. So this way you're refunding directly against whatever you charged for. So it comes right out of your sales. So in this case, I kept it pretty simple, some service. Now, we're going to refund the full, we want to credit back the whole $2,500, but we only need to refund $500. So let's see how this plays out. Let's see if we get the options we need so that we can kind of split it up because part of the credit's going to be used to re refund the customer. The other part's going to be used to write off, you know, to credit against what's remaining due on the invoice. So let's say we save and close. QuickBooks prompts us, what do we want to do? Retain as available credit, give a refund, apply to an invoice. So here's what I would do. I would say let's first apply it to an invoice, right? Because the only amount due on the invoice is going to be 2000 So this way, I have, it brings me up. It says, okay, apply credit to the invoices. Here are the invoices. The original amount is 2500 The amount due is 2000 so I can apply the $2,000. And I'll still have $500 left in credits available to be refunded. So now that I've saved that, it's got me back in the customer center. Let's go back to the credit memo. We'll double click the credit memo. And then over here, I've got use credit to. And now I can say, let's give a refund, right? And now the only amount remaining to refund is the $500. So now we just have to choose how we're going to refund it which, you know, if, if they paid by credit card, we can refund the credit card. And if you're processing credit cards with QuickBooks, you check off this option and it will go on and process the refund. If you're using a service outside of QuickBooks, then you'll have to do it. Of course, you have to log into that system, issue the refund. And then either way here, what's important to note is that when I process this, and let's say it is by credit card, I click OK. So that's done. So now the credit memo is fully refunded. I can save that, but it puts it in undeposited funds because what's going to happen is this credit is going to get processed. It's going to come through probably in a day or two or three, right? And so when I get funded by, for that day's uh, sales, it's going to you know be reduced by $500. Now, if, if $500 credit winds up being more than what I've charged in the same day, then I get a net you know, negative deposit basically is what it really amounts to. And that's the way it kind of works and looks in QuickBooks. It's the only situation where QuickBooks will let me record a negative deposit because it's coming from credit card refunds. And so it, it lets me actually book this from undeposited funds as a negative deposit amount. And it won't actually yell at me. So when I hit save and close, I can go look at my check register now. And sure enough, there it is, the $500 refund you know, comes there in the bank account. Of course, that's got to match up with what actually hits the bank account. So I hope this answers your questions. And for those of you out there who might have been wondering the same thing, and to my client, who, of course, will remain confidential, I hope this helps. If not, of course, you know where to reach me. And for those of you who haven't ever reached me before for consulting or training services, we're available. Visit the brand new nerdenterprises.com at www.nerdenterprises.com. 
Check us out, consulting services, training services. We do it all, and we do it all for you. Or give me a call, 866-945-8070. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.